three, two, one. Welcome back to my channel. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Becky and I do true crime videos. Today's case is very graphic. We will be discussing the tragic murder of Terry Harris, her two children, 11-year-old Lacey Bennett and 13-year-old John Paul, along with Lacey's friends, Connie Gent, who is also aged 11. You know I don't usually give my opinion in videos, but I really, really, really had to bite my tongue in today's video. It's truly awful and it's just despicable. So I'll be giving all my usual trigger warnings. Terry Harris was an avid West Ham United fan and was described as a dedicated mother to her two children from a previous partner, John and Lacey. They were her life. She was very generous with her smile and loved by many. Terry's favorite song was Supermarket Flowers by Ed Sheeran. John and Lacey's dad is Jason Bennett and the kids were described as beautiful and well-mannered. John wanted to be an engineer and Lacey was a girly girl. Lacey had a friend named Connie Gent. Connie's father described her as a special and sweet little girl. She was her dad's little sidekick, his rock, shining star, and angel. Connie liked her music and loved to sing. She also loved TikTok. Connie touched everyone she met. The dad spoke about silly things they used to argue about, like who would have the last chocolate. Connie was grateful for everything and she didn't expect anything. Connie's father said that she was one of the nicest girls you would ever meet and the hardest thing is that I'm not going to get to hold her again. All three children attended Outwood Academy. Damien Bendel and Terry had met in 2020 through a dating website when he was living in Swindon. This was about 18 months before the murders. In around April, they began their relationship and he visited Terry's house for what was described in court as a temporary visit, although he had effectively moved in. The court heard that Bendel was a heavy drug user. Bendel was also described as having a very controlling personality and a cocaine-fueled wannabe gangster who bragged about animal abuse. While staying with Terry, Bendel told one of her friends that he was wanted by police in Swindon for setting a car on fire. During his stay in Sheffield, Bendel began getting in trouble once he went out with a large knife and returned home to say that he had stabbed a man. In July 2020, Bendel told Terry's mother about the animal abuse. When Bendel walked out, Terry had shown her mother his knuckle duster. In June 2021, Bendel was sentenced in Swindon Crown Court to a suspended prison sentence for arson. However, this wasn't the first run-in with the law. He had many previous charges, which I'll talk about later. By September 2021, the relationship between Terry and Bendel was said to be deteriorating due to his drug use and his behavior of showing attention to other women. The family and loved ones of Terry said that Bendel's drug use and unstable behavior had a disastrous effect on Terry. Connie was only meant to be staying at Terry's family home for one night, but was granted permission by her mother to stay over again on the evening she lost her life. Lacey and Connie had been out raising money for charity just hours before the attack. Terry had texted and asked the girls to be home by 8 p.m., and all of the children were inside the home from then. The text messages sent between Terry and her children that day showed that she was a caring and loving mother who enjoyed a close and loving relationship with them. From 8.30 p.m. onwards, Bendel, who was also in the house, was trying to contact his drug dealer to get cocaine. The children were all called in to brush their teeth and were sent to bed at around 10 p.m. 13-year-old John had sent his father a text message that night about a Christmas gift that he was hoping to receive from him. 
The prosecutor said the evidence suggests the attacks took place between 9.42 p.m. and 10 p.m. on September 18th, 2021. However, another article states that the attacks happened in the early hours of the morning. Bendel allegedly stalked through the home, killing his innocent victims with a claw hammer. John was killed in the bathroom as he was about to take a shower before Bendel attacked him. Terry and her daughter Lacey were found in the main bedroom. Terry was on the floor and Lacey was on the bed. Bendel attacked and ripped Lacey downstairs before moving her upstairs where he ripped her again. Connie, who was just staying over with Lacey, was found dead in another bedroom. A post-mortem confirmed that Terry was in early stages of pregnancy, and a paternity test showed that Bendel was the father. It was also found that Terry suffered blunt force trauma, with at least nine, but probably more, injuries to her head and face. Lacey had suffered blunt force trauma and a brain injury, and had defensive injuries on her forearm. There had also been pressure applied to her neck, It is suspected that that was a ligature. The post-mortem also revealed the rape. Connie and John were also found to have blunt force injuries, with John suggesting he had tried to defend himself. It was said that the victims were hit with such force they did not stand a chance. Just hours after Bendel carried out this horrific act, He took John Paul's Xbox from his room, called a taxi, and went to exchange the console for drugs. In the taxi, he told the driver his night was not too bad, but a bit mad. This interaction is just chilling. At about 7am, he spoke to his mother on the phone before walking to a local shop to buy tobacco. At 7.26 a.m., his mother called the police, seeking for assistance for her son. She told the police that he had got a self-inflicted stab wound. At 7.30 a.m., he used Connie's phone to call 999. In the ambulance, Nat, um, I've killed four people. Okay, just hold the line. Bear with me. Well, I know it's going to happen we just... to go to prison, obviously, but again. Wow, what, have you done, have you done something to anyone else? Yeah. Well, we don't. I've murdered four people. When two officers arrived, they found Bendel outside the home, indicating he had stabbed himself in the chest. Where else? Just my chest, uh, four inches in with a, with a bread knife. Can we have a look? And, yeah, and one on the stomach. Bendel said he didn't know why he did it and that he blacked out. The police officer asked, are your family okay? Bendel said, No, there's one in the bathroom, two upstairs, and one in the bedroom. When the officer went into the home, he can be heard on the body cam footage saying, Oh Jesus, there's at least three casualties, unresponsive. I think they're all dead. They're all gone, mate. They're all gone. Speaking at the police station, Bendall said, The whole house is covered in claret, which is red wine. Yup. You heard that right, he was actually joking about the house being covered in blood. Then he goes on to say, I didn't realise what I did until I walked into my room and I saw my missus and my daughter. Bet you don't get four murders in Kilmarsh. Well, five, as my missus is having my baby. Like, even just that response is just so cold. Like, what, why, like, what on earth? So now I'm going to talk about the failures and how this all could have possibly been prevented. A watchdog has addressed multiple failings by probation officers that could have prevented the killings. Chief Inspector of Probation, Justin Russell, has slammed the probation service's handling of the case as of an unacceptable standard and critical opportunities to correct errors were missed. Bendel was already in the probation system for arson, robbery, attempted robbery, and grievous bodily harm convictions. With a significant criminal record dating back to 2004, Bendel is first recorded as being supervised by probation in 2011, more than a decade before the quadruple murder. 
He had been serving a 24-month suspended sentence for arson when he carried out the killings. There were 17 recommendations for improvement. Mr. Russell said that the Bendel case was very concerning, adding that the parents of Terry Harris and Connie Gent were shocked by the findings. Bendel was wrongly categorized as a low-risk offender and supervised by inexperienced staff. Bendel was classed as opposing medium risk of serious harm to the public and a low risk of posing serious harm to partners and children. He was actually clearly of high risk and unfortunately that decision had serious consequences. Records showed that an ex-partner had previously made allegations of DA against him, whilst police had also contacted probation a year prior to the attacks in amid concern about his association with a 16-year-old girl who is in foster care. The report also found intelligence about the risk of serious sexual harm that he could pose to girls, and this was not explored or recorded sufficiently to inform checks to help keep children safe. One probation officer questioned by inspectors who was involved with Bendel's case in 2016 described him as cold and calculated and quite psychopathic. The watchdog found that the probation team was focused on his extreme right-wing views and violence behind bars rather than the risk of domestic harm. Bendel, a one-time cage fighter, repeatedly claimed that he was a high-ranking member of a white supremacist group called the Aryan Brotherhood and described having two Nazi-inspired tattoos. But the inspectors found no evidence that the probation officers carried out checks with police to establish whether this was true after he was recorded as being prone to telling made-up stories. No attempt was made to speak to Terry Harris or visit the property, and there is no evidence that essential DA and child safeguarding checks were carried out by the probation officers. Terry's mom, Angela Smith, opened up. The heartbroken grandmother, who lost three of her closest family members, said, How could Bendel commit such horrific acts of violence against a woman and three defenseless children who posed no threat or harm towards him? The way they died haunts me every day. She recalled, The kids would say, I'm scared of monsters. I told them, There's no such thing as monsters. How wrong was I? She continued, Terry was my only child. I will never have any other children or grandchildren. They were the most precious thing in my life. Lacey and John's dad, Jason Bennett, said, It's like my life has been shattered into a billion pieces, never to be repaired. I no longer have a future. Life is empty. All I have is sadness. The love I crave is from my beautiful kids. I can't have that. It's a hole that can never be filled. I would do anything just to speak to them and say goodnight to my beautifuls. The murder of my two children has destroyed and taken my life away. Looking forward to the future is painful and difficult. I won't see them grow up or be given the opportunity to be a granddad. It took over 15 months for Bendel to face justice. He was sentenced to a whole life order, which is believed to be the first ever sentence of that kind handed down at Derby Crown Court. So a whole life order means that he will never get out of jail. He is staying at HMP Wakefield in Yorkshire, also known as Monsters Mansion, as it is a high security prison, which is well known for housing some of Britain's most notorious criminals. It is believed this is where he will stay for the rest of his life. Well, that is the end of today's video. I hope everybody is okay after listening to that. I hope everybody is staying happy, safe, and healthy. In the description below, there will be resources that you can look at, educate yourself, or educate others. But I hope everybody is okay.
and my heart goes out to the families and loved ones that experienced the loss of Terry Harris, John and Lacey and Connie.